he knew something about finance, he knew something about uh, commercial things, but the main point, he knew uh, how to scout players. Don't underestimate the fact that to convince players to come to the smallest club in Holland was an unbelievable fact, and, and uh, that is what he did all the time. You're quite impressed with the way he knows his details. And then his personal touch comes into it as an extra. I think Everton has a, a, a bright future. So if I said to you, a lot of people referred to you as the architect, would you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I heard that, uh, that name before. Um, yeah, you try to, to build something in, in the club uh, where you work, and um, yeah, probably uh, the name is coming from that. I grew up in a normal neighborhood. My father was um, hardworking with, uh, with one brother, six years younger. And I remember one of my friends, his father was always boxing and, um, and was a hardworking uh, father also. So he brought from the boxing some gloves for us and then we could box also uh, in the street. But it was mainly, uh, mainly football. After school, he would go outside and only play football. We had to call him in for dinner, and after dinner, he'd go outside again. Sometimes we had to run because yeah, some neighbors were complaining. They were a little bit afraid about their windows and that kind of thing, so uh, it was not always easy, but we could always find a solution. Football was the only thing he was interested in, nothing else. If he'd get some money, he would put it in his money box. He didn't spend much. If he had 25 cents, he would only spend 10. I could always count on him. I remember I used to wear glasses, and if someone was going to make fun of me, Marcel would make sure it wouldn't happen. From childhood, he's been my big brother and my best friend. It's always been like that. He's my best friend. Uh, I trust him for my, with my life. Sometimes I have to fight for him, and so uh, what I did. And, uh, but he's still my, uh, my best friend in life. I think the main part of my career I played as a, as a midfielder was not so quick. And later on I played also as a centre back. Yeah, it was in the time that I returned from Feyenoord to RKC. And um, I started preparing myself for a career after my football career. And it, it sounds strange, but I never had planned to stay in football. So I was looking in the direction of uh, yeah, a commercial job. One of the last years of my career, they asked me if I can do some commercial things for the club. And that's how it starts. RKC Valveik means a lot to me. I started there 25 years ago as a sponsor. We have a saying here in Valveik. RKC can't do without Ben Mandemakers. And Ben Mandemakers can't do without RKC. He was always very competitive to me. Um, he drove me to a level that I didn't think I could, could reach. The first time I met him was such a long time ago. The first time was at RKC. And I've been privileged to offer him advice ever since. From that point on, our connection and friendship was established. At the end of his career, I advised him to take up the commercial responsibilities. We needed sponsors, and Marcel had a way with them. We then thought, who could become general manager? Marcel had already learnt a lot and said he wanted to do that job. He's been a great player, he's commercially savvy. We were convinced that yes, he can do this. And so we made him general manager. 
we had only few people in the office and um, so I learned quickly all the all the things in the club um, and that was for me very good and very helpful for the rest of my career. At that moment we have to change um, the manager, the coach and I insist to um, to appoint a new coach and so I make the decision finally with, with the board and um, I wanted Martin Jong. I can remember working for Canal Plus. That was a, a broadcaster. He phoned me almost every day and I didn't want to go to that club. So I said to Marcel, you know, all due respect, but you can't expect me to go there. Every time when I approached him, he refused. He came again and he said, I want to talk to you. It was probably the fourth time or something. But I keep going, I keep going. And then after a week, he phoned me again. He said, could you go to a game in the south of Holland to watch us? It was a horrible game. I think they get beat 5 0. And, and I said to my missus, you know, it's impossible to go there. We attacked him with the three board members and myself, and, uh, and then he said yes. And that's how our relation starts. He really convinced me to go there because after a year, I still couldn't believe that I was there. We did something amazing in, in that period because there was not so much money. So we have to generate our own money. So we developed young players. And we had five or six players. And after a couple of years, we sold for 20 million guilders. That was a good combination. I thought it was really good. Martin Jol had great success with us, but they really did it together to get ahead. Yeah, I worked eight years um, at RKC and during that time I was approached several times by other clubs. But I, I was really happy there and uh, I didn't have the feeling that I need to go. At one moment AZ Altmar uh, approached me and I went up there, spoke with uh, the owner and there was one other board member and the CEO, uh, Tone Gerbrands. He knew exactly what he wanted. And uh, for him it was new because uh, he was also a kind of a general director in this other club. And in this uh, situation I was a general director and he could only focus on, uh, on the soccer cases. Okay, they were not, let's say, the top, but just below the top. Um, and they were very ambitious and, and with a coach with Louis van Gaal, uh, one of the best coaches in the world at that moment, um, that was also very special for me. I'm very direct in my co communication and uh, Marcel Brans uh, is also a sensitive guy. When you are direct, you are triggering your fellow uh, men. And, and uh, I think uh, after the first uh, three, four months, it, uh, we were very close because I saw his qualities. In that time, I could learn also a lot from Louis van Gaal because he was working in, in the biggest clubs of the world at that moment. So that helped me also um, to grow up to another level. But together with Marcel, uh, with me as a general director and uh, with Louis van Gaal. That was a combination who was successful. So uh, we built as an architect the situation in Alkmaar. We wanted to have very good scouts. That was very important. So he changed four or five people and we had the scouting system in his, his way of thinking. And also about we started with, with the academy. It has to be also a higher level. So we needed good players from our own academy to come over there. He can deliver players that shall be in the future a key player. And uh, he is a master of that. I learned a lot in that year because the environment was still okay. We had one of the best coaches in the world and we could not perform. We were uh, at that time in a relegation zone. And uh, we have made together an error. Individual, they were good boys, but as a team, we could not find a solution at building a team like we did before. When I feel that as a trainer coach, 
then I think we need another training coach. I remember me and Louis, we drive to Hervein to watch um, a second team uh, game. And I spoke with him one and a half hour on the way up and one and a half hour on the way down, and I convinced him to stay. I said, OK, then, then I, I come back. And then we have uh, played the last six games and, and we were not relegated. We changed the squad. Um, we got the group out of the group. So we have sold a lot of uh, players and we make uh, a, a, another mix in the dressing room. At the first home game, we lost. In the second game, we got a red card. We lost 4 0 4 1 in, in Den Haag. And so the pressure came again. And then the third game was AZ Altmar against PSV. And we won 1 0. And from that moment, we got a run that was incredible. We played unbeaten uh, series of 28 uh, matches. As a result, I think four games before the end, we were the champion. 60,000 people in Alkmaar, uh, they came over there uh, because uh, one time in 20 years perhaps that is, uh, that is possible and perhaps it will never happen again. But uh, so it was incredible what, what happened over there. It was something special. I think it was more than 30 years ago that they could celebrate such a thing. So it was really amazing what happened uh, in the city with the, with the fans, with, with everyone. I was ready for the next step, so I went to PSV. He went to a big club, and there happened the same situation as he left Alkmaar, because uh, there was a big problem financial here in this club. It was a big challenge, and the board asked me um, to achieve three things. There should be more players from our own academy growing up to the first team. We should have a better transfer balance, so buying players and selling players should be better. Yeah, I, I knew Marcel, uh, of course, from, from football in Holland, his work he did at AZ. But the moment we really get to know each other much better was, of course, when we uh, started working together at, at, at PSV. We make some changes uh, because we want to go in a new direction with younger players, because the academy has also uh, brought up the first potentials. Um, so there was a really new start. We said then, OK, when we get sportive successful and we get Champions League money, uh, we will spend a part of that money in the academy. Of course, it makes me proud that I was part of that. I was looking what to do, commentating, uh, whatever. Uh, what, what else can we do? Not, not much. <laughs> just just stay, in, stay in football. At that time, Ruud, of course, was one of the biggest players in the world. And he didn't know which direction he wants to go. So I asked him, can, can you join us? And can you do, come two times a week to, to work with the strikers in, uh, from the academy and, and the first team? And he started doing that. He, he, he likes it. Marcel also said, yeah, just come to PSV, take your time, whatever you need, how long you need. You'll be a good coach. When you really get to know Roots, then you know if he does something, then he will do it very, very well. And yeah, he said, working with the, with the guys and, and he gets more enthusiastic and yeah, that's how it starts. He's really involved as a technical director in first team development, in academy, in signing players. He goes and sees the players himself in the end after the scouting and recruitment confirm it could be a good signing. Every step we made, we knew what we were doing together and uh, yeah, I think it was one of the key elements of the success we had as a club in that period. Let's say it was a club with, with I think, great potential. It's a club that was had some changes in the last years. And you saw the challenge. I spoke with, with the owner, I spoke with the chairman, and you got a feeling, OK, this is, this is a club that, that fits me. The first impression was good, of course. I, I think he's a humble guy. He has a, a lot of knowledge about football, about players. And so it's a pleasure to work with him because uh, we meet each other every day, every single day we are here together to try to work and to try to improve the team and the squad. We brought in seven new players and uh, 
course, then you always hope that they do well. And uh, we were lucky they, uh, they did well in the first season. We brought some new energy. And even in the first season, we had a good period. A brilliant finish from Richarlison. Delia takes and scores. Tempting ball in and it's headed home by Yerry Mina. More excellent movement off the ball and Bernard puts it in for two. Everton so far on top in this game. Ele também está sempre preocupado. He's always busy and involved é, in our daily lives. Com, com, com o nosso dia -a -dia, Checking if we feel good, bem, if gente, we have any ideas é, on how things could be improved at the club, pode melhorar dentro do clube, and if our é, families are settling in to where we are living. Bem com, com, com so I think that all morando. these small things então, do make a difference é, é, at a club as big as Everton because we really então, feel é, at home. Porque a gente realmente se sente em casa. Marcel is a very special person to me because, first of all, he always believed in me. When I arrived, he treated me like a son. When I was injured, he would always try to make me feel better. He was always writing to me. Well, he would ask me, Yeri, how are you doing? And that gave me strength. Nina's there again! Unbelievable! I will never interfere in, um, let's say, talking about starting 11 and that kind of things, because that's his job. He's the whole day working with the players on the pitch. I'm not on the pitch. Sometimes I see you training, but there's a lot of other stuff I have to do. Um, so I'm always preparing um, and creating the environment for him that he can work the best. Keane is there, can Walcott reach it? Yes, he can! I think it's important for a club to have a good technical director and that everyone use his personal character to, to have a relationship with, with other people. The fact that he's, uh, he wants to know everything about players, I think is good because Everyone can see uh, the technical ability of the player, but it's difficult to, to know the, the real character of the player. And this is one of the most important parts when you recruit a player. And the fact that Marcel has this kind of ability is really important for the club. It was incredibly touching. What he said to my mum was that he would look after me. And with my mum, being the most important person in my life, this showed me even more that I'd be made to feel at home here. Boys Keane! There's the moment! There's his big moment! Every time I see him, every day, every second, I just want to keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you, which might be a bit excessive, but in all seriousness, he was the most important person for me in deciding to come here. Thank you, he's welcome in our club. Thank you. He's very generous and nice, even though he's more like, he seems like he's reserved, but when he speaks to everyone, he's coming from the heart and he has a lot of passion for the club and it's nice to hear. It won't be 2-1. Basically, you're creating a history and you're part of it, so it's the early stages for me, just I'm waiting to see what the future holds. Initially, he was in contact with my agent, and then when things started to materialise, he sent me a message to reassure me, saying that it's a family club here, that he had faith in my qualities, and that it was up to me to join. That reassured me, and that's why I joined. Dean is born in for Richarlison! They lead again! When I first met him, I thought he was the club's president because he's a guy that is very well dressed and very stylish. So I thought he was the president. Richarlison! Brilliantly finished from Richarlison! Now Dean, Richarlison comes alive in the area. Oh, brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! A ballet-like goal! 
from Everton's Brazilian striker. Richardson was one of the targets because I knew him um, from Brazil and tried to get him also in PSV, but he was too expensive. Richardson now with an opportunity to run at Gary Cahill. 2 1 Everton. Counter attacking football at its best. Ele gosta muito de, de... He likes bringing in new people. So that is what really caught his eye when he wanted to bring me in and he saw my potential. So he's someone who just likes new players to make the club the best it can be. Taken by Gomez, Gomez glides through. Brilliant! The way they want me to be part of this project, the way they wanted me here, the passion they showed me as well. So it was really easy to convince me to come here. Basically, he was honest with me. He showed me all the respect. He tried to make me understand what was the project for the next couple of years, uh, the big project and the way we want to win something for the club again. I think it's so important for our academy that you create a pathway um, for our young talents um, to the first team. And I really believe that it's possible. I think there are now, every day we create a squad, that there is space for, for younger players to train with the first team. Training with the first team is a, is a next step for a young player. I think that we are working together to improve the, this team, this squad, and this club. I think we are really focused there and uh, we can use all our knowledge and we have the same goal, that is to, to bring uh, Everton at the top in England and in Europe. But I really have the confidence if, if we stick together um, in the next years that we can achieve something special here. Yeah, if you look ahead, then there, I think there comes a great time for this club because um, the project of the stadium is, is, is amazing. Um, it's very important for the club and it can give the, the, the club an extra push. Um, but there is a, uh, let's say I try to build a fundament for this club also that, that we can have a fantastic future. And I really strongly believe in that. And I think, look around us in the Premier League, the clubs that built a stable situation, um, they are successful and of course you can sometimes be a short period successful um, but if you want to be long-term successful I think that needs some time. He made me a book and he wrote a letter in the book and he said if I ever go to a big club I will not hesitate to uh, contact you. I can remember years ago that he phoned me. He said, I would love to get you here, but I think your wages are too high. And I think I probably reckon that you're right. He is buying young players with high potentials. He has the eye for that. So uh, I think it's, it's a, a good uh, choice of Everton. Am I proud of Marcel? I'm really proud. That's very typical of my dad. I'm also very proud of him. He's succeeding yet again. And I think it's just fantastic. He'll make sure there's unity in the club and with the players. That there's a balance. He'll keep working on it and improving it. That's Marcel. That is Marcel. We had great times, and uh, I think it's it's uh, not only a great professional, uh, but also uh, as a person, uh, I think it's a great character to have uh, at the club. You've seen the facilities uh, and it's state of the art uh, in the world, I, I can say. So we can work in the best facilities with uh, every year with better players. So that's a legacy he left. 
You need to have patience with him. Then he builds the system and when he goes, he leaves something behind. Last week I had a, a, a call with Tone and he said to pressure is a privilege. And that's something, if you think about it, it's true because it really does matter and it really matters what you're doing and, and you have to enjoy that. And um, I was a guy that also when it doesn't work, I work harder to get it done.